Albert Einstein one of the greatest minds of the 20th century and his relativity theory is one of the most significant theory in the history of science. It changed the landscape of science by introducing revolutionary concepts that shook our understanding of the physical world. Relativity means the quality or state of being relative. The same incident can be seen differently by different observers. For example, imagine you're standing on a train while your friend is standing outside the train, watching it pass by. If lightning struck on both ends of the train, your friend would see both bolts of lightning strike at the same time. But on the train, you are closer to the bolt of lightning that the train is moving toward. So you see this lightning first because the light has a shorter distance to travel. This thought experiment showed that time moves differently for someone moving than for someone standing still. Do you know that the concept of relativity was not introduced by Einstein? It was first introduced by an Italian astronomer, physicist and engineer Galileo Galilei. Einstein's major contribution was the recognition that the speed of light in a vacuum is constant. This idea does not have a major impact on our lives since we travel at speeds much slower than light speed. But, for objects traveling near light speed, Newtonian and Galilean relativity does not hold. At that point we have to apply Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Before Einstein, physicists understood the universe in terms of three laws of motion presented by Isaac Newton in 1687, in his famous book Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica. Latin for Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. We all know these famous three laws of motion from high school. In Newtonian mechanics, there is no upper limit for the speed of any particle. There comes a lot of problems when two frames are moving with respect to each other at a considerable speed of light. The addition of velocities that is Galilean transformation shows a big problem where some particles can even travel faster than light and thus everything seems against basic laws of nature. So, we are in need of a different type of mechanics. In the 19th century, scientists imagined that space was filled everywhere by a continuous medium called the ether. Light rays and radio signals were waves in this ether. They thought light travel at a fixed speed through the ether. That means its speed would appear to be lower if you were traveling in the same direction as the light and its speed would appear to be higher if you were traveling in the opposite direction to the light. But a series of experiments failed to find any evidence for differences in speed due to motion through the ether. A. A. Mitchelson invented optical interferometer. Mitchelson first performed the experiment in 1881 to show the existence of ether. In 1887 he performed the experiment in collaboration with E. W. Morley. They computed the phase difference between the beams 1 and 2. This difference can arise due to two causes, a, the different path lengths traveled and b, the different speeds of travel with respect to the instrument because of the ether wind. The second cause is important for this moment. In Michelson morley experiment they mounted the interferometer on a massive stone slab for stability and floated the apparatus in mercury so that it could be rotated smoothly about a central pin. To make the light path as long as possible, mirrors were arranged on the slab to reflect the beams back and forth through eight round trips. See carefully the figure and consider the following cases. For the path of beam 1, time for beam 1 to travel from the beam splitter to mirror 1 and back is T1, given by this equation. The speed of light is C and the speed of ether wind is V. Upstream speed is C minus V and downstream speed is C plus V with respect to apparatus. For the path of beam 2 we T to get this equation. Now the difference in transit time is delta T equals T2 minus T1. Now, if the instrument is rotated through 90 degree, delta T prime is given by this equation. The rotation changes the difference is given by this. Using binomial expansion and ignoring terms higher than second order, we find this. So, the rotation should cause a shift in the fringe pattern due to the change of phase. Let, delta n represents the number of fringes moving past the crosshairs as the pattern shifts. If the light of wavelength lambda is used and the period of one vibration is t then we get delta n as this equation. In the Mitchelson-Morley experiment the arms were of nearly equal length, 
So, L1 equals L2 equals L. If we choose these values for lambda and V by C, then we obtain delta N equals 0.4. This is a shift of 4 tenths a fringe. Means negligible. The experimental conclusion was that there was no fringe shift at all. Observations were made day and night and during all seasons of the year. But, the expected fringe shift was not observed. This experiment showed that the light velocity is the same when measured along two perpendicular axes in the frame which, presumably, is moving relative to ether frame in a different direction at different times of the year. George Fitzgerald and the Hendrik Lorentz were the first to suggest that bodies moving through the ether would contract and that clocks would slow. This shrinking and slowing would be such that everyone would measure the same speed for light no matter how they were moving with respect to the ether. It was a clock of the Swiss patent office in Bern, named Albert Einstein, who removed the idea of ether and solved the previous problems about the speed of light. Einstein began to think about how moving observers see events differently from stationary observers. Einstein said that absolute motion is a meaningless concept. He published his theory, Special Relativity, in the German physics journal Annalen Allen der Physik in 1905. The special theory of relativity is based on two postulates. One. The principle of relativity, the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. It says that the laws of physics are absolute, universal, and the same for all inertial observers. 2. The principle of the constancy of the speed of light, the speed of light in free space has the same value c in all inertial reference frames. Now the question is, why the special relativity called special? Special theory of relativity is called special because it is limited to a special case of inertial frames of reference. Einstein's postulates require a new consideration of the fundamental nature of time and space. In this section, we discuss how the postulates affect measurements of time and length intervals by observers in different frames of reference. In the next video, we will discuss frame of reference and continue this topic. Thank you. If you like this video then please give this video a thumbs up and share it with physics lovers. And, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Please hit the notification bell icon so that you'll never miss the updates. Join our premium membership for more offers and freebies. Do you know, that, all the stars, planets, galaxies and other visible objects make up only about 4% of our universe. The other 96% is made of invisible stuff. We cannot see or detect them but know about their existence. This invisible area of the universe is explained in the book The Invisible Creation written by Shuvadip Ganguly. This book will give you a transparent idea and knowledge about this deep part of our universe. The subject matter is presented in a simple way, step by step with sufficient illustrations. This book may be of interest to students, teachers, as well as general readers who are interested in astronomy. The book is available in both paperback and Kindle ebook editions at Amazon, Flipkart and Notion Press Store. All the purchase links are given in the description box. Get your copy now.